Campion is a Japanese light novel series written by Jar Takatsuki and illustrated by Sikorsky. It has been published by Shuisha in their Super Dash Bunko imprint since September 2008. It has been adapted into a manga series published in Shuisha's Super Dash and Go. A 13 episode anime television series, produced by Diomeda Copyright, aired in Japan on ATX and Tokyo MX beginning in July 2012 and ended in September 2012. Sentai Filmworks released an English dub of the TV series in North America. The novel's story focuses on Godo Kizuneji, a retired baseball player, as he becomes a champion after killing the god of war, Berath Ragnar. Plot, Godo Kizuneji, a retired baseball player, is asked by his grandfather to return a stone tablet to a friend in Sardinia named Lucretia Zola. After meeting the demonically manipulative swordmistress Erica Blandelli, he encounters the god of war, Berath Ragnar. After killing the god, Godo becomes a champion, or god slayer. His duty is to fight heretical gods who start changing things to suit themselves, usually at the expense of the people in the area. One of the problems associated with being a champion, is that his status keeps attracting attention and difficult girls. Blandelli, who strongly professes her love for him, usually creates awkward and misunderstood situations for him in particular. Characters, main characters, Godo Kizuneji, voiced by, Yoshi Shigumatsuoka, Blake Shepard, the main protagonist of the series and is the seventh champion. Originally a 15-year-old retired middle school baseball player after his grandfather asked him to return a stone tablet to a friend in Sardinia named Lucretia Zola. While doing this a series of events take place in which he kills the god Verath Ragnar, a Persian god of victory. Godo obtains the abilities of Verath Ragnar's ten forms, bull, ram, camel, stallion, goat, boar, raptor, wind, the youth, and the warrior. Each of these forms give Godo a different ability however each also has a unique condition for activation, and some have a price. For example, to use Raptor the requirement is being attacked by something at high speed. This allows him to accelerate his speed so that everything around him would appear to be in slow motion or stopped. However, the longer he uses the speed the more pain he feels. Once a certain time has passed he is essentially paralyzed by pain for a short period. During his battle with Verath Ragnar, Godo obtained a golden sword, that can only be used by the warrior aspect which has the ability to cut through divinity itself, in short, it can take away a god's power, rendering them a mere mortal. The golden sword's requirement is to know enough about a god to be able to call upon its power. The more he knows about the god, the more powerful his blade is. Mostly, he receives that information from Erica or the other girls. He receives the information via kissing, which is the only way to infuse the information into a campion due to their incredible magic resistance. This and ingestion are the only ways someone can have their magic, benign or malign, bypass a majority of the resistance. So even if someone tried to cast a healing spell on Godo, for example, with his permission it will not work unless it is cast through a kiss or ingested in a potion. Even direct contact by laying on hands will be blocked by the resistance. Later on he fights and defeats Athena, but doesn't kill her. As a result she stepped aside to let him face Perseus first as he objected to her plan which was to trigger a volcanic eruption right next to Naples since Perseus is vulnerable to heat that can melt steel due to his attribute as steel. However, he owes her an open favor for the insight she gave Liliana that would provide the knowledge and background he needed to power up his golden sword. His personality is still that of a high school student over his head resulting in him trying to bury his head in the sand about anything to do with gods as much as possible. He is a little afraid of women due to being completely dense to their feelings, numerous interrogations and punishments from his sister, along with Erica's pranks and occasional blackmail. He feels he is just a normal student. He's really shy and wants to do the right thing. He doesn't realize that the time with his grandfather has already taught him how to attract women. He tends to take what people say at face value, missing their intentions. He receives a bento from a girl who says, I just made too much without realizing she had made it specially. His childhood friend, Ashuka Tokunaga, 
his sister Shizuka, and his now deceased grandmother worry about him realizing his ability and then abusing it. Erika Blandelli, voiced by, Yako Hikaza, Monica Real. Erika is a member of the Copper Black Cross one of the European magic organizations that inherited secret rites from the Knights Templar and is based in Milan, Italy. Their battle tactics and colors has likened them to that of Red Devils. Holding the rank of Great Knight and the title of Diavolo Rosso, she is a magic swordsman that through coincidence meets Godeyu and assists him while he's in Sardinia, Italy. She inherited the title of Diavolo Rosso from her uncle, Paolo Blandelli. Although in the novels she discovers the identity of the god manifesting in Sardinia it just happened to coincidentally be the very same day as when Godo declared he was going to Italy. Using her weapon Quare di Leone, an enchanted sword that she can summon to her hand, known as the King of Lions. She also has the ability to use the sword to summon a large silver lion which can attack in place of Erika in the anime, wary of Godo Yu, she ends up falling in love with him. She's a very beautiful 16-year-old Italian girl with blue eyes and long blonde hair. She's only about 160 centimeters tall. She likes to keep herself in control of her own situation, thus she can be very forceful in her affection and jealousy. However, she knows her own limitations to be able to help and protect Goda Yuso is willing to be open-minded enough to allow other women to become additional wives. However, there are the conditions that she has to approve of them and that Goda Yu and the others always recognized her as number one, his proper first wife. That, and possess either the strength and skills needed to help protect him from non-divine threats or possess a very useful ability Yuri is the only woman Erika accepted without reservation as Yuri possesses the strongest spiritual sight in the world, is extremely in love with Goda Yu, can provide the temperament and abilities of a Maiko but with a quiet and submissive personality that's unlikely to threaten Erika's position. While Liliana's equal in martial skills as a knight, her magic expertise excels over the other and can be even be considered unrivaled in the areas of iron alchemy, fire, creation, transformation, destruction, and reinforcement spells. To the point of earning Ina's praise over her ability to skillfully manipulate iron using delicate spells not only with ease, but beautiful finesse as well. However, while her skill level is comparative to that of a witch, since she's not a descendant of witches she didn't inherit the ability to use witchcraft. Is extremely adept at mental manipulation, reading and weaving through politics. She doesn't cook or clean up after herself and leaves such tasks to Goda Yu or her maid, Anna. She does fry manger yaki under Goda Yu's instructions to gain practice in making strong strikes with a light weapon she usually uses Quare di Leone in the form of a rapier. If the situation demands she can use her magic to transform it into other weapons including a variety of spears, lances, and swords. Part of quarry can be used to create a shield for pure defense by itself or as accompaniment to the weapon form she is wielding as well. Its true form is that of a long, silvery, broadsword infused with the spell words of David which give it the ability to harm gods. Erica has to cast the spell words to use them on the sword if it is in any form other than its true form. Using her magic she can multiply the Quare di Leone, even after throwing it, or in its lion form. She used the multiple lions combined with the spell words of David against Athena in the first volume, and created multiple spears in midair to take out multiple enemies in the second volume. Whether there is a restriction on how many duplicates she can make, due to ability or power, is unknown but so far has made up to 13 lions and 7 spears. Her lions are infused with intelligence allowing them to act independently just like real lions, but under her control. Yuri Meria, voiced by, Kana Hanazawa, Hilary Haag, Yuri is a Masashino Haimiko. Masashino is an organization whose duty is to protect Kanto. Talented Mikos within the organization are selected at a young age, Given the honor of being titled Heim Maiko, and are the ones who handle the greatest tasks and responsibilities. However, this means Heim Maiko is subject to the authority of the Committee for the Compilation of True History, a Japanese government based magical organization, who aims to use Goda Yu to protect Japan while minimizing his potential as a threat. She is quite harsh on Goda Yu the majority of the time due to the misunderstanding that Goda Yu is doing something lecherous, 
but is endeared by Goda Yu as he sees the self-sacrifice that lies behind it. She is often called Yamato Nada Shiko and is the most beautiful girl in the school. She is clairvoyant and uses magic to heal and send knowledge to Goda Yu. In terms of fighting level and physical stamina, she is the weakest but excels at support and is unrivaled at information gathering. She is a good, if not excellent, cook in both taste and visual appeal, and the head of the tea ceremony club that Goda Yu's little sister is a member of. Like Erika, she falls in love with Goda Yu when she sees how willing he is to put his all to protect others, will step up to handle things only he can even if he would rather avoid it, but especially after he unselfishly goes to great efforts and endures great pain to rescue and help not just her but her sister as well. She has long dark hair, and is about 150 euro 154 centimeters tall her age before being kidnapped is 15. When upset or extremely serious she unknowingly smiles while giving off an extremely cold presence like a yakshaw. Her figure is slender to point where it looks like she would break if not handled carefully. She performs below average in sports. Liliana Kranjar, voiced by, Iri Kai Tamara, Genevieve Simmons, Liliana is the childhood friend of Erica and belongs to the organization Bronze Black Cross which is a mage knight organization similar to, occasionally working but usually competing with the Copper Black Cross, which also serves the champion Salvatore Dunny. They also inherited some of the secret rites of the Knights Templar. Although her grandfather and some other members favor and support the champion Marquis Vauban by preference. While the Copper Black Cross are referred to as Red Devils, the Bronze Black Cross are referred to as Blue Berserkers. Liliana has been also been called the Sword Fairy and Blue Witch, although these seem to be more nicknames as she is rarely called either while Erica is called or calls herself Diavolo so often. She is often compared to be on equal footing to Erica in both martial skills and combat, as well as known by people to be among the top of the current generation of great knights. However, due to her direct and upfront nature she doesn't have the political acumen Erica possesses and is more gullible to Erica and Karen's pranks. Although after some pointers from Erica and Kanura she is starting to face and overcome her shortcomings rather than make panicked protests to Erica's displeasure. She follows the night codes to the extreme and is often strict to Goda Yu, giving her the name of mother by Goda Yu's little sister. Despite this she is also in love with Goda Yu, but does her best to hide it from others. Usually covering up her desire to be in close proximity or help Goda Yu with claims of merely serving her role as a knight or bodyguard, she is a beautiful silvered hair girl with a svelte body. Age when Vauban tried to kidnap Yuri was 16, but whether she's had a birthday since then is unknown. Though she lacks the well-curved, voluptuous, vigor Erica possesses, her beauty is more along that of an ephemeral, delicate fairy. While receiving their blessing as newly entitled knights they encountered the newly christened sixth champion, Salvador Dunny, without realizing he was a champion. Wanting to receive the best swords they had to find Saint Raffaello first and so went with Dunny after hearing he had been the only one to have ever found her. Long story short Dunny created a ruckus, helped them find not only Saint Raffaello, but a buried grimoire she was guarding which is where they learned the spell words of David. Saint Raffaello gave them a key and location of the catacombs where her swords, Quare di Leone and Il Maestro, were hidden until knights worthy of them appeared. As a final test the two had to get past all the traps and monsters in the catacombs and find the swords to claim them. They managed to do so shortly before Lillian was summoned by Vodin to unknowingly become a part of his ritual to summon a heretic guard. Lillian claimed Il Maestro while Erica chose the Quare di Leone. Using this unique sword, she often fights with great speed, excellent magic, and flying attacks similar to that of a falcon. She is great at housework and cooking, is a descendant of witches, and has the hobby of writing embarrassing romantic novels, which Erica loves to read and blackmail her with. In terms of fighting level, she is an equal to Erica. However, her expertise over Erica is in flight magic, witchcraft, potions, communicating with plants and animals, spells relating to water, earth, and sky. This allows her to make flying attacks similar to a sparrow but with the ability to halt in mid-air, unaffected by gravity, 
before continuing her attack while Erika can only come close with leap magic this also gives her the ability to swim through water as easily as a fish, harvest herbs, cast hard spells and create difficult potions. Which proved invaluable in not only opening a gate to the astral realm to rescue Erika and Godayu but the knowledge to create the potion required to be unaffected by the astral realm's environment as a descendant of witches she can use witchcraft and spells like Witch's Eye, which is considered the strongest and most versatile observation spell. She can also summon and use the Bow of Jonathan, which is powerful enough to harm gods, such as Perseus. Although it appears she shoots four arrows at a time, only one is real, the others are illusions to increase the chances of the real arrow hitting. Her sword, Eel Maestro, is kept in sword form to hide its true power like Erica does with Quare di Leone. Released, it takes on its true appearance of Anaginata, which releases spell melodies when swung that can disrupt the concentration of even the toughest of opponents, although since magic in nature it has limited, if any effect, on campions or gods. However, in Naginata form the spell words of David are infused into it as well giving it the ability to harm gods. Ina Sizhuin, voiced by, Yuka Sata, Kali Mosia, Ina is a beautiful girl with long, shiny, black hair with black eyes. Her birthday is unknown, but probably about 15 to 16 years old like the other girls. Ina, like Yuri, is a high Maiko as well as a Yamato Neida Shiko but with a figure similar to Erika's. She is the strongest of all Japan's High Maiko, giving her the name High Maiko of the Sword. She was specially trained by Suzanne. She is aggressive, impulsive, and has a tendency to ignore complicated things. Due to the harsh training she endured Ina lacks a bit of common sense in everyday life, but this has made her an unpredictable fighter as she relies on instinct. She possesses the sword Arma no Murakumo no Tsuruji and can be draw power from it becoming possessed in the process. However, she can only do this for short periods before her body starts taking damage. Also, if she takes in too much power, there's a chance of Suzanu's instincts or Rama no Murakumo taking control of her and running amok. When this happens she can fight on par with campions and gods alike. Erika considers her a threat to her position with Godo due to Ina being the only other harem member with both a strong personality and a voluptuous. Curvy, figure Erika believes that Ina can get close to Godo as a guy with her forthright nature before showing some feminine charm as a girl. Due to isolation from society during her training Ina is not very experienced with relationships in general. She was sent to seduce Godo and kick out his European lovers. However she knew that he was her soulmate the instant she saw him and has completely fallen for him to the point that she is willing to be his mistress as long as she can be with him she misunderstands his wanting to develop their relationship slowly as well as his desire to become a man good enough for her as signs that she is not good enough to be his wife which frustrates Godo as much as Erika's wild antics do. Campions, due to a curse, if a mortal kills a god, that mortal shall become immortal and obtain the abilities of the killed god. These are the people known as Campion. Campions will not age have enhanced bodies that can heal from even mortal wounds much faster, bones stronger than steel, and their magic ability exceeds that of the most powerful mages, even if they had no talent or experience as a human. However, they still have to study and learn how to use magic to deliberately cast magic spells rather than authorities. They also have very high magic immunity which protects them from mortal enemy magic but also prevents them from receiving beneficial magic such as teaching or healing. Thus, a caster has to deliver the spells internally through methods such as kissing or ingestion. Examples are the knowledge spells the girls use to increase Godo's knowledge of gods, or the potion Liliana tricked him into drinking to knock him out for a while. Campions are often referred by magic users as kings, or demon kings, and are often feared as unstoppable monsters, Although gaining alliances or friendly relationships with campions are a high priority task by most magical corporations as a means of influencing or harnessing the campion's power. To any magic affiliations campions have the right of rule, meaning campions have the final decision in all matters and are to be obeyed without judgment. In return a campion's only responsibility is to deal with whatever heretic gods appear to protect humanity as a whole. This rule is partially because that's the way the system is set up, 
but mainly because only another campion can stand up to or criticize another campion as nobody else, even working as a team, is strong enough to hurt or enforce rules upon a campion. Note that the campions number order are chronological from when they first appeared, and not a reference to power level or actual age. Escher, for example, is considered to be centuries old but has admitted that she hasn't even lived for even 50 years. This is because her time-traveling authority may force her to return from days to decades later than the time she left the present. All campions are referred by magic users as having the same authority and strength, regardless of their age and ability. When temporarily dead their spirits meet Pandora. Pandora is the goddess who turns a person who just killed a god into a campion. She also decides whether or not a campion receives the authorities from a god they just killed based on some undefined set of rules. Most campions recall little of anything she tells them as only someone with the qualities to be a mage to retain the knowledge. Only a few campion fall in this category as most mages know better than to challenge a god head on and either try negotiation, sealing, or enact damage control while praying the god either leaves or is defeated by a campion. Sasha Dejenstal Vauban, voiced by, and Shizuka, John Swayze, the first campion. He is a Hungarian cold man whose only desire is to battle worthy opponents and obtaining abilities. Vauban is the oldest of the campions and because of this fact not all of his authorities are known to the order, it is only during battle with Vauban that Godo becomes privy to what his abilities are and where they come from, with help from his shrine maiden friend has defeated and usurped the authorities of Apollo and Osiris. Current abilities shown thus far is creating severe storms, summoning swarms of dire wolves swallowing some based attacks, turning people into salt with his eyes, and summoning the bodies of anyone he's killed to serve him although of common ancestry titled himself Marquis after taking over the castle of the local Marquis, and for some personal reason took the Marquis favorite dog's name, Boban, as his family name. As he was struggling to get enough food just to survive another day before becoming a campion he is a gluttonous streak where he'll consume large quantities of food just because he can and not because of actual hunger or enjoyment of the food. Bears a grudge against Salvatore for crashing his ritual four years ago and killing the heretic god he had summoned as a means to get worthy prey to hunt. However, after their clash he wants Godo to get stronger so it'll be more entertaining when they have a rematch. From their battle it seems to have been entertained him enough to not try summoning another heretic god anytime soon. Normal appearance is that of a healthy and athletic old man with white-gray hair. Alternate form is that of a huge werewolf. Leo Hao, the second campion. A campion from China. Possessing the full set of the five Confucian virtues of benevolence, righteousness, propriety, knowledge and integrity. She was a great figure who carried herself with royal splendor. Before Godo met her, she was seeking a worthy opponent who could defeat her just like Varathragna had. Also, she believes her valor to be the greatest in the world, she places greater value on herself than anyone else on the earth, and is undecided on whether humanity is worth saving or not. Simply put, she has delusions on the level of middle school students that have been spoiled since birth. Many of her followers don't go near her as she feels that if former kings and emperors could punish people for just looking at or hearing them, then being a campion demands receiving similar respect thus, when home, any commoner who sees her pluck out their eyes, and any commoner who hears her has to rip their ears off unless she grants permission otherwise. If she is imprisoned somewhere, then to satisfy her pride she has to destroy the entire prison and walk out the main doors proudly even if the place is a historic landmark before being used to imprison her. Her proto-copyright Gar copyright remarks that if she ever discovered the Greenwich Assembly had listed her authorities with names other than the ones she chose, death and destruction would ensue. Despite all this, Lerno Howe is very observant of formality and propriety, as well as the rules of etiquette. In Volume 6, Godo made a valid argument on why she should leave things to him which she had to comply with as it had taint her honor to overrule him. However, to preserve her honor she declares herself his Anisama, although he refuses to call her anything other than Anisan. Due to the circumstances he's not allowed to explain what brought about them being sworn family as it could harm her reputation as a maiden and therefore would be forced to settle her vengeance on him. 
there are some signs that she likes him, but doesn't realize it herself yet since she's always been a disciplined warrior, but never a girlfriend. Although she does dress to look beautiful to maintain the proper image of her station, she still considers makeup, and excessive unnecessary methods beyond that as too vain and ubiquitous. Normal attire is clothing from the Han era and natural beauty similar to that of an orchid. She has defeated and usurped the authorities of the benevolent King Buddha Guardians and the Hindu Goddess Garitri which are her preferred authorities to use. She has defeated an unknown number of gods but rarely encounters a situation which requires more than her preferred authorities. For example, one authority would cover everything in the world with flowers if she didn't keep control of it. Meaning not just the ground but people, animals, stone, etc. and the flowers could be harmless, poisonous, or dangerous like giant Venus fly traps. With over 200 years experience she has mastered Daoist arts which allows her to use techniques similar to European magic spells such as leap magic. Another ability is changing herself to a small lizard, although whether it's an authority or a Daoist art is unknown. In the Campion series Daoist, along with some other skills, are being treated the same as magic, just slight differences due to different methods used in different countries. Had applied Daoist arts to Godo so would know immediately when his body is invaded by extraordinary divine power which would only occur from a decisive battle with a heretic god it only worked the once as she did not appear or have her disciple take action when Godo was under the effects of Lancelot's insane rush. Escher, the third campion. A campion who lives in Alexandria. She has the nicknames the Eternal Beauty, Goddess of Caves or Mysterious Queen of Caves. When she became a campion she only had the name Esher and was given the title Madam by the magicians of the time. She is a beautiful maiden about 17 or 18 years old with black hair and olive skin. Personality is that of a wanderer who can't stay in one place for too long without feeling confined and needing to go on a journey for a few years. The authorities revealed so far don't seem to have any combat potential, but do other things such as the authority she received from Persephone that allows her to share the energy of life with living things which heals even severe wounds. Although if she has a day to prep she can flip the spring side of the authority into the winter side which can remove life, but Godo stopped her from actually using it the time she considered it. Another she usurped from a certain Catholic saint in the Catholic religion causes everyone to like her which helps keep her out of trouble in areas where the locals ostracize or treat strangers with hostility. Although if she doesn't keep the effect toned down or inspires a group of defenders too often then she could unintentionally create a cult that would lay down their lives for her. It is suggested but not confirmed that she is an authority giving her eternal youth. The names referring to caves is a result of an authority that can create a hole to another world and has the appearance of a cave. This is considered a most troublesome authority by Saint Raffaello in that most of the holes link to the past this is a problem in that any changes in the past could affect the future similar to the butterfly effect, such as accidentally killing the ancestor of a historical figure which would prevent that figure from being born or the troubles a campion triggers just by being there. Also, once a hole is formed it will reappear in the same spot every now and then even years later. The main problem with this authority is that she has no control over what time period the holes open up to, and the holes appearing and sucking her in whenever she forgets about having the authority. Also, the connection in time is not stable so someone entering the hole a few minutes earlier or later than another person will still arrive at the same spot, but days or years before or after the other. Annie Charlton, the fourth campion. A campion from America also goes by the masked identity of John Pluto Smith. A serious-minded individual, she only lets her feelings show when she's drunk or in the guise of Smith. When in the armored form of John Pluto Smith, she acts much more relaxed and flamboyant. At some point the Smith persona turned into a semi-split personality which seems to express all the emotions and stuff Annie has been heavily suppressing. So Annie and Smith are aware and know everything the other personality experiences, but thoughts and actions reflect whichever one is out. After fighting alongside Lerno How and Godo, she seems to start to grow feelings toward Godo, although she denies to herself due to the difference between their ages and Godo's reputation of being a playboy. Has usurped the authorities of Tetsatipoka and Artemis. 
Tetsatipoka's authorities require sacrifices to use, such as sacrificing the ability of fire, street lights, etc. to create light in an area for a period of time to transform into a jaguar. Artemis authorities so far is to automatically reload Artemis arrows in a special, large revolver created specifically for her human form by a dark elven metal worker living in the astral realm out of extremely rare all steel once a lunar cycle. The bullets are Artemis arrows so only six shots can be fired until the next lunar cycle, and any shots not used before reloading can't be removed and saved for additional shots. Only her human form needs to use the gun to shoot the arrows, the jaguar form, for example, can shoot the arrows from her mouth but each shot still consumes an arrow from the revolver. Since the gun was made specifically for her use no one else can use it unless she is nearby and wills permission for the wielder. When not going around as Smith, she goes around as herself as Smith's collaborator, member of Sorcerer's Sacrilege Investigation and highly adept mage. As Annie wears dark leather suits, rectangular half-glasses, with short fiery red hair. As John Pluto Smith wears various cloths that present the proper atmosphere of a hero over armor that makes her look like an insect, primarily the helmet, and hides the fact that Smith isn't a man but a woman. Alexander Gascoigne, the fifth campion. A campion also known as Black Prince Alec from Britain, leader of political organization Royal Arsenal that opposed Princess Alice organization White Angamot. Has the authority of fallen angel Ramiel Black Lightning, an ability that grants him super speed. Can also turn himself into a lightning avatar made of plasma to travel even faster, evade physical injury, and use lightning strikes. However, if the lightning avatar is dispelled he'll revert back to his normal physical form. While it would take several mages of Zola's skill working in harmony to do so, this could result in him falling to his death if his avatar form got dispelled while he's flying miles above the ground. Has also defeated the Minotaur granting and the Three Furies personality is arrogant but not completely cold. Such as willing to work, and on rare occasions extend common courtesy, with Alice when their goals align on issues such as Guinevere. Looks like a young man with black hair. Salvatore Dunni, voiced by, Teku Iaguchi, Andrew Love, the sixth campion. He has a carefree personality, considered by most to be a complete idiot with no common sense and lacks magical skills. He and Kizneji Godo are on equal levels as campion, as it is mentioned that they have a duel that ends in a draw, afterwards developing a strong friendship from this. Salvatore is also notably hated or strongly disliked by the campion Sasha Dejenstal Boban, for stealing his prey that he had summoned specifically to relieve boredom. While not cruel like Boban, he is feared for all the trouble his antics cause because his usual excuse is it would be more interesting this way. That, and his utter lack of understanding much less caring about serious issues which he usually ignores as irrelevant with the belief that every solution to every issue is in his scabbard, literally. Is a battle maniac so anything not related to battle is considered boring, irrelevant, and hardly worth remembering. Such as not being able to remember Erica's or Liliana's names until their affiliation with Godo is mentioned. Dani's interest isn't because he sees Godo as a friend or ally but due to his extreme anticipation of having a rematch once Godo masters all his authorities. As such he warned Godo about Vauban entering Japan and used, return to medieval style to keep Erika and Yuri from helping Godo so he would grow stronger, faster in Naples than he would with their help. He is a former Templar candidate but failed due to abysmally poor magic scores and ability well below that of a young novice who never heard of magic before. Is considered an exceptional prodigy with swords, and always carries one around with him wherever he goes just in case he gets into an interesting fight. So far the only person to beat him in a sword fight after he became a campion was Saint Raffaello. The Copper Black Cross Association answers to him since his home base coincides with their headquarters. Most of the Bronze Black Cross members do too, or at least the Italy-based ones, although both organizations are long-time rivals and some Bronze Black Cross members are Vauban supporters he has usurped the authorities of the King of the Two All the Dark Copyright Danan, Muodo Nordic Hero Siegfried and Vulcan his fourth authority he usurped from Dionysus. It causes all magical powers to overload, activate and run out of control. 
This suits him very well as he doesn't have enough control yet to keep the authority from wreaking havoc with his magic, but since he's too inept to use magic but only uses authorities and sword skills it doesn't hamper his style at all. He is a blonde-haired Italian in his early twenties with a scar going around his right shoulder where it meets the arm and always carrying around a basic, mass-produced, sword Erica and Liliana had purchased for him soon after he defeated New Order. His creed and spell words is that he will not allow anything to exist in the world that he cannot cut. Anyone who gets to know him, including his friend and butler, considers him to be a troublemaking idiot who looks to his scabbard for solutions and uncaring about the suffering he causes all in the name of fun. Uldin, the eighth champion to appear in the series. He is a Hunnic warrior and is even compared as being Godo's twin in that they both tend to act the same and have similar fighting temperaments. Although not explained, a possible reason is that he's an unrecorded and distant ancestor of Godo which would explain the similarities in their personalities and luck with women. He has a habit of acting on his impulses and therefore has a harem of women spread throughout the world, although he is apparently married to four of them, with Ruska and Clotilde making their appearance along with Uldin. His other two wives are at two other fortresses he controls. As with the time period feels that if he likes a woman it is ok to carry her off as she will eventually fall for him like the others anyway. His primary authority that is used is Dragon Tamer, which allows him to control the dragons that he keeps in the forest near his castle. That and turn dragon bones into an army of smaller skeleton dragons similar to the story of sewing dragon's teeth into the ground to raise an army. He is also known as Tiz Sword and as Tiz Authority allows him to resurrect for a limited time his army of dragons to fight again. Heretic Gods Heretic gods are gods that come to exist in real world, rather than staying as myths. Heretic gods can use their ability same as in their myths. A human who weakens and killed a heretic god single-handedly will gain their abilities and become a champion, while champions can also kill other heretic gods single-handedly to gain more abilities. Killing a heretic god who is already weakened by someone else or cooperating with other people during the fight to kill them will not receive any ability. Note that even if killed, heretic gods will resurrect later as long as the myth is still known among humans. Athena, voiced by, Yui Ogura, Brittany Karboski, Athena has a cold personality and seems willing to do anything to reclaim her lost powers. She was defeated by Godo in Volume 1 of the light novel and returned as a cameo at the end of Volume 3. Having the aspects of both Athena and Medusa is due to myths that reconcile both entities as being the same goddess. She returns in Volume 4 to train Godo and helps him defeat Perseus, another heretic god, by providing the knowledge to power his, sword of the warrior form. In exchange for her assistance, Godo had to promise her that he would fulfill any one wish. Her appearance is that of a young teenager with silver hair and black eyes similar to those of an owl. After acquiring the Gorgon Iron, she gained a slightly more mature appearance, but lost it after her battle with Godo. In the anime it is stated that she lost her age and rank before becoming a heretic god, so her young form appears to be a punishment of some kind. While she claims that she does not want anyone else to defeat Godo but her, she does seem to have taken an interest in Godo's growth and development. It is possible that, like Erika and the others, Having watched and interacted with him she has started to develop feelings for him that she isn't aware of, or willing to admit to herself. This is shown in the anime when she sought his help after losing her memories. When she talks with Shizuka it is hinted that that her feelings towards Godo might be affectionate. Furthermore, when in peril, she was able to summon him through his wind authority by calling his name. In Volume 9 she is slain by the heretic King Lancelot du Lac after Lancelot interferes with her duel with Godo. During the fight she was severely weakened by her previous confrontation with the divine ancestor Guinevere. During that fight Guinevere used the Holy Grail to latch onto and constantly drain Athena's divine powers. To slow down the process Athena absorbed the Grail into her body. Athena manages to temporarily slow down the draining by petrifying herself during her first confrontation with Godo. Godo temporarily halts the grail by combining Arma no Marakumo and the warrior incarnation's golden sword into an anti-divine artifact weapon which severely damages the grail, but not Athena. 
This was possible due to the knowledge about the grail that Guinevere had given him for his showdown with Athena. During the fight Athena defends against Lancelot's charge but suffers extensive damage, and bestows the last of her powers on Godo, allowing him to fight to a stalemate against Lancelot. Although Athena is completely absorbed by the grail when she dies, it seems that she somehow imparted something of herself into his mind before the end. This impression is bolstered when an impression of Athena's owl along with knowledge of how to create a powerful sword comes to Godo's mind during his battle with Seuss. Guinevere later uses the Grail's ability to transform into Athena, albeit a weaker version, along with the mission to find and wake the King of End. Bereth Ragnar, voiced by, Junko Minugawa, Leraldo Amzaldua, an ancient Persian warlord. He likes fighting and will do anything to challenge a worthy opponent. He has defeated nine other warlords and inherited their abilities. He meets Godo in the form of a youth and doesn't remember his name or that he is a god. During several encounters he helps Godo out with a few situations along with the Perseus Stone. After recovering his divinity, he has forgotten that he gave Godo the stone so that Godo could finally give him the long-awaited defeat he craved. To save Sicily, Godo uses the stone to steal Verithrena's incarnation of the horse. After being defeated his powers were usurped by Godo, making him a champion. Being joyful at finally being defeated, he blesses Godo before passing on, along with a stern command not to fall to anyone else before their rematch. Perseus, voiced by, Nabatoshi Kana, Christopher Patton, a heretic god, known as the legendary dragon killer. He slays any dragon he encounters, disregarding the consequences that come from killing the dragon. Since this Perseus history was born from the Roman belief that Perseus was the same god as Mithra, the former master of Verithragna, he possesses the power to seal the authorities of Verithragna. This is bad for Godo as his golden sword can only target and damage the aspect of Mithra or Perseus, but not both. Due to heroic steel being known in many myths as conquering dragons rescuing and marrying the maiden in distress any god with the property of heroic steel can dominate and control any descendant of those goddesses and priestesses. Thus anyone with the disposition of a myco which can be enthralled. Especially as they've been raised into believing that a god's power is absolute and too strong for them, although love is stronger and can break the spell. He was defeated in battle by Godo. Afterwards in the novel he is killed by Salvatore Dunni, but his authority is somehow absorbed by Guinevere's circle of usurpation. In the anime, he is consumed by a shadowy figure. Pandora, voiced by, Yuiko Tozumi, Sasha Pazinger a demigod. She's known to be the mother of all champions and occasionally appears in Godo's dreams when he is in the border between life and death after the ram form has activated. She provides information, criticism, pep talks, or even just small talk with any of the champions who either have just become a champion, or died but haven't yet revived through their authorities. However, until the champion reaches some level in an unknown aspect most of the talk will be forgotten with only the subconscious remembering anything. Mages such as John Pluto Smith and the Black Prince are able to recall their time with Pandora normally. Secondary characters, Lucretia Zola, voiced by, Atsuko Tanaka, Maggie Fleckno, a powerful witch whom Godo meets when returning an artifact of hers in place of his grandfather, who had promised his departed wife to never meet with Zola again. Lucretia attended college with and befriended Godo Yuki's Meiji's grandfather but due to her high magic ability and talent, she has been able to retain the appearance of a woman in her twenties despite being in her sixties. She has long, flaxen hair, a lazy nature, voluptuous body and lives on the island of Sicily. While living away from major cities she makes sure to have modern conveniences such as a refrigerator, air conditioning, and a computer with internet access. Lucretia is very knowledgeable about various gods, magic, and other matters, but shares Erica's disposition for always choosing the more interesting course of action and teasing Godo Yu. Deciding it would be more interesting Lucretia returned the grimoire to Godo to help him deal with the two heretic gods who had appeared. She seems determined to be Godo's local wife although whether she's serious, playing around, or both, is unknown. Ariana Hayama Ariadi, voiced by, Sakagamizura, 
Juliet Simmons, Erica's personal maid, chosen by her master due to her possessing interesting aspects. According to Erica, Ariana is smart, responsible, and hardworking, she would be a perfect maid except for her four interesting points. Those four points are, 1, despite her extremely dangerous driving habits she has somehow, miraculously, not only obtained a driver's license, but has never had a single serious accident too, her cooking is on a level to be found in any four or five star restaurant, unless it's cooked in a pot. Her pot cooked meals are so bad that Erica won't even touch them, and they set off Godot's campion instincts as being very dangerous. 3. Ariana has no martial or magic ability at all. 4. While otherwise perfect, she will make a single unintentional major mistake every three days like clockwork. Ariana doesn't appear to have noticed these personal points at all. As such, this makes her interesting enough for Erica to employ her. Ariana is also friends with Karen Jankulovsky with whom she likes to gossip. Ariana always dresses in a maid outfit, at the beach she wears an apron over her swimsuit, has black hair and eyes and is about 19 years old. How long she had been working for Erica is unknown, but most likely a while as Erica spoke her name when waking up the morning after her drinking contest with Godo. It is possible that Ariana is hiding her real abilities and deliberately emphasizing her interesting points to ensure that Erica keeps her on as her maid. Karen Jankulovsky, voiced by, Konami Sata, Alison Simrel, Liliana's personal maid. She has a devil's personality similar to Erica's she has noticed Liliana's feeling toward Godo and often gives her advice as a push, as well as making fun of her master. She also secretly sells copies of Liliana's journal diary to Erica. Is someone Erica feels is good to have a long-term relationship with as Karen considered selling privileged information on the bronze black cross as too risky and thus is less likely to get caught from overextending herself. Has short green hair and constantly wears a maid outfit unless meeting Erica in secret. Is about 14 years old but has already learned unfinished equivalency exams equal to that of a college degree is apprenticed to and learning how to be a witch from Liliana. Also occasionally takes bribes from Lily's grandfather to get Lily to dress and act more sexually and less strictly. Shizuka Kizuneji, voiced by, Rina Heidekar, Lucy Christian, Godo's younger sister. Shizuka has short brown hair and said to already be showing signs of growing into a beauty like their mother. She is a strong-willed girl who is suspicious about her brother's actions and fears that he has inherited their grandfather's lady killer ways. Shizuka is aware of a multitude of girls, especially several of her friends, being fond of him but refuses to enlighten him about it. Like their deceased grandmother and Godo's childhood friend Ashuka, she worries that one day Godo will not only realize his extreme talent at attracting the love and affection of women, but will come to abuse it. Like Yuri, Shizuka often criticizes Godo but it is a front for her concern for her brother. She in her senior year of middle school and a year younger than Godo. Since Godo's high school and her middle school are part of the same school complex, she is a member of the same tea ceremony club that Yuri belongs to. Shizuka is jealous of all the attention Godo receives from Erika, who notes that he is no longer solely Shizuka's anymore. Evidence of this can be seen in Volume 5 when Shizuka becomes extremely happy that Godo cuts his vacation abroad short to spend part of the summer with her. Media, Manga, a manga adaptation illustrated by Jairo Sakamoto began serialization in the inaugural October 2011 issue of Shuisha's Super Dash and Go. Anime, a 13-episode anime adaptation produced by Diomeda Copyright A and directed by Kizo Kizukawa aired in Japan between July and September 2012 and has been licensed in North America by Sentai Filmworks. The opening theme song is Brave Blade by Megu Sakuragawa and the closing theme song is raised by Yui Ogura. References External links, official light novel website, official anime website, Campion at Anime News Network's Encyclopedia.